Hello, this is Timothy Perfit from Two Canoes Software, and in this video, I want to talk a bit about our MDS Automaton, which is the Arduino-based uh, device that allows you to kick off the workflows with very minimal uh, technician intervention. So it's based on uh, an, um, an Arduino-compatible uh, Adafruit Itsy Bitsy, which is the little circuit board that's in here. And what it does is it enters the commands and it enters in the command R to boot into recovery, opens up terminal, does a bunch of other stuff with making sure that the language and uh, the mouse and those kind of things don't interfere, mouse setup don't interfere with the, the configuration. Um, and this is, if you buy them from us, you get a USB cable, a 3D print enclosure, and the Itsy Bitsy. The firmware is available to flash inside the free MDS application, so you can do it yourself if you want to. But if you buy one of these from us, it, it um, uh, supports the project as well as you have this nice little uh, device to be able to help automate. So let me show you how it works. Um, the uh, the, when you get the MDS Tomaton from us, we flash the most recent firmware on it. If there is an update, you'll get prompted automatically when you're configuring it. Um, or if you're doing it yourself, you can just click on Create Mac Automaton. We're not going to do that in this video because there's no, there's no reason to do that. But um, let me click on Configure Automaton, and then I will plug it into my Mac to uh, actually configure it. Okay, so it goes ahead and reads the settings that are currently on the automaton, and it shows them uh, to me here. The um, uh, the kind of the key piece to doing all this is once the terminal is open in recovery, it'll run the command to uh, uh, kick off the workflow selector, which is based on imager. You can see that the command is slash volume slash mds slash run. It's not a magical uh, collection of of uh, characters, but rather this, what it's doing is the run is the name of the script that gets run from the MDS, uh, from a volume named MDS, um, and it's a, a external volume, so it's mounted on slash volumes. Well, all volumes are on there, it's, but it's under slash volumes. Um, so I have this external drive here that I've already saved an MDS workflow onto it. It could be a thumb, USB flash drive, thumb drive, this SSD, what it doesn't really matter. Um, but I name the volume MDS, it's HFS plus formatted, which the Mac OS installer requires. And uh, so when I plug this in, that script called run will be run from there. So there's no real magic to that. Um, it's just automating that process. And that's the command to run. If you were to change the name of your volume, like you were calling it MDS volume or migrate workflow, you would change the volume name here to make sure it runs the, the correct, uh, it finds the volume to run that command on. So um, I've already saved the workflow onto this SSD. So I'm going to leave that command as it is. Um, the delay before, uh, Opening terminal five seconds. So the way the automaton works is, when you uh, lost my time, I was plugged in. When you plug in the automaton, it will pro press the command R key to go into recovery for about thirty seconds. Um, then it'll wait uh, about thirty to fifty more seconds um, till it gets to the place where it can choose the, the terminal. During that period of time, it can. Uh, it also will dismiss any uh, request to set up a like a Bluetooth keyboard, if you have a keyboard attached, those kind of things. Um, and also select the language if, if it's the first time you've gone into recovery. So if, if you're finding that it's not running the commands because you need a bit more time, you can extend this delay before opening terminal. And what that really does is it adds some additional time onto that 30 seconds when it's uh, for that initial boot to get up to it. So I did some testing and for this 2018 Mac Mini, I found that an additional five seconds works really well. Uh, to delay before running command in terminal, what that does is once it gives the command open up terminal, sometimes if you have a Mac with a splitting, spinning platter drive like an iMac, it'll take some additional time for terminal actually to become available. And so you might want to extend this. Six seconds usually works pretty well. If you have a, US, uh, if you have a firmware passwords on your Mac, when you first plug in the automaton, it can go ahead and uh, open up that... Uh, when you first plug in the automaton, it can put in the firmware password and go past it. That's only really useful if you have a firmware password that's the same across all your Macs. If you, do, if you have a different one that you have to look up or something like that, you can manually enter it. So that adds a couple of seconds on the beginning of it. But if you have the same firmware password on all your machines, um, you can just put it in here and the automaton will do it. Uh, the next option is boot and recovery and one workflow when automaton is plugged in. So the normal way we recommend to do it is when you start up the Mac, you hold down the option key to get to the boot selector. 
boot selectors uh, selecting which volume to boot from. We're going into recovery, so what we want to do is press Command R. And the reason that you don't want to do Command R or the automaton doesn't uh, do Command R right away is because there's the automaton gets power from the USB bus. So when you turn it on, there's kind of a race condition to be able to see does the it come on soon enough to get. Uh, command R. So it, it, it could work, um, but the more kind of definitive way, uh, deterministic way, is hold down the option key to get to the boot selector, then plug the automaton in. Um, some uh, Mac firmware, uh, especially ones I found in like the 2015 time frame, if you have the boot selector and you press command R, it actually goes to internet recovery. So in those kind of edge cases, we recommend that when you power on the Mac, you just press command R, uh, and it'll go start going to recovery, then plug in the automaton. Then it works just as well. So best thing to do is test it, make sure it works. There is some options. It doesn't have to press Command R for you. It can also press Option Command R, which will boot to internet recovery, um, and uh, that will uh, do the latest macOS that's compatible. And then it can also do the Shift Option Command R, which is uh, macOS that came with your Mac or the voice vo of the uh, version closest to it. So that boots the internet recovery. That, of course, will take a lot longer to boot, so you'll have to increase your delay. For our demo here, we'll just do Command R, which boots to the local recovery. Um, this option, Open Disk Utility and Raced versus Volume, this is actually more applicable for machines that were before 10.15. Um, in 10.15 or later, if you have File Vault turned on, it forces you enter password even if you're going to erase the volume. But if you do have 10.14 or earlier, it can open up Disk Utility and erase that first volume. If you have File Vault enabled, you have to enter in a password or the um, uh, the key for uh, the restore key, or what's it called? The um, I forget the key, and uh, the administrative key that allows you to unlock File Vault. Or go ahead and erase it, reset that Mac, and then go through the process again. And then the final option, set language and keyboard to English for running workflow. That's in the language selector. You can have some control over which one it selects. For this demo, I'm just going to leave it unchecked. So um, then I click on update, and it'll save those settings to the automaton. So now that's done. And um, so next, let me show you an example of actually exactly what happens when you plug in the automaton. So before I plug into this Mac Mini to be able to start uh, restoring it to uh, and running the workflow, let me open up the keyboard viewer on macOS. And you can see this will show you the keystrokes. And because they, uh, it'll start typing things, I'll open up text edit so it has some place to type. So when I plug in the automaton, there it's plugged in, you can see it doesn't do anything for about five seconds. And that's where it's waiting to go into this administration mode where you can do the commands. Now, after five seconds, you can see it's pressing Command R. You can look on the keyboard here, it says Command and R have uh, red circles around them. So it's pressing Command R, and it'll do that for about 30 seconds. Um, you can see it's interesting the text edit when you press Command R will show and hide the ribbon. And so it's, it's toggling that for us. So you can see what it did is it presented itself as a keyboard, and then now it's uh, doing Command R. And after about 30 seconds, it'll stop that Command R, and it'll wait for about another minute um, for the machine to continue booting into recovery. And then once it gets in recovery, it'll start uh, giving the keystrokes uh, to be able to um, uh, configure that Mac. So um, that's uh, the rest of the keystrokes you can sit and watch, but I just want to show you that the uh, you can turn on the on-screen keyboard and see the timing exactly. And that's sometimes helpful for troubleshooting. So the next thing I'll do is I'll unplug this uh, the automaton and I will plug it into this Mac Mini. So I've started up this Mac Mini and I've held the option key down and it's now showing me the volumes that are available. So I want to plug in my SSD. Okay, so the SSD has now been plugged in. I, I don't need to select any volume from it because it is going to uh, going to recovery. So I'll plug in my automaton into the, any USB port on the Mac Mini. Okay, it's plugged in. So after about five seconds, the uh, Command R will be pressed and it'll start booting into recovery. There it goes. And now it's booting up to recovery. 
So I'll let it boot into recovery and then I'll come back and, uh, and walk through the next steps. All right, so it's in recovery now and it's doing the keyboard strokes to open up terminal. Uh, once terminal is open, it will actually run the command that slash volume slash MDS slash run. And it did that. Uh, I'm not touching the keyboard at all. It's all happening automatically. The, the script that starts up the workflow selector will connect up to Wi-Fi, which it did. And now it's going to launch up the workflow selector and uh, I'll open up a log as well. Um, so and the workflow is set to automatically start uh, restoring the uh, Mac OS and packages to the volume um, automatically. So at this point, I don't have to touch anything. And we'll let this go ahead and run. All right, so there is a delay that can be set, 30 seconds. So if I wanted to cancel it, I could cancel it if I wanted to, but again, I'm not touching anything. And it will go ahead and uh, lay down Mac OS, any packages, scripts, profiles, and resources. So that's it for the Mac uh, OS, or sorry, the uh, MDS Automaton. The, uh, it allows you to very much speed up, especially if you have a lot of Macs that you're being able to reset, we call rapid return to service or initial setup. Um, it allows this very, very fast um, configuration of, uh, of, of configuring Macs. So please make sure to subscribe by clicking on the button below, as well as give me a like because it makes me happy. Uh, and uh, also check out our product play page at twocanoes.com slash MDS for the most up-to-date information on uh, MDS. Thank you very much for watching and make sure to check back for more exciting videos.